Hey, welcome to video 10 in the Epoxy Granite Metal Lathe series. Sorry for the long delay between the videos. I had a little bit of trouble finding a good stopping point and I'd just been really busy. Now that my tooth belt has arrived, I just want to check that it's actually long enough that my ball screw can be mounted where it's supposed to be. Since that seems like it'll work pretty well, I moved on to my next potential problem, which is this cross slide. It looks like the cross slide rails are going to cover up the holes that mount my cross slide to the main rails. I want to see if I can move the closer cross slide rail a little bit further from the camera so that way it's not over those bolt holes. That way I can remove the entire cross slide without having to take the cross slide rails off. For now I think I'll wait on that. So I'm going to instead put holes in the cross slide to hold the end mounts for the ball screw. I'm just doing a few quick measurements just to make sure that when I put these holes in, I can end up putting that first rail in either position, covering the holes or not, and still fit the ball screw. And after checking the measurements, I'm just using my gauge blocks on each side just to make sure that this ball screw is going to be parallel to my master rail, which is the further rail from the camera here. I still don't have a set of metric transfer punches, but the 64th set that I got for like $8 gets close enough pretty much every time. Every once in a while I'll wrap the closest 64th with a piece of tape to get a better fit if I need a really tight tolerance. But even then, I rarely seem to need to do that. I'm sure this is obvious to a lot of people, but it seems like it's always a good idea to drill out a blind hole considerably deeper than you need it if you're tapping it. It just makes your life so much easier than trying to fiddle with a bottom tap getting those last like two threads in. I drilled these holes out about half an inch deeper than I planned on tapping them and that made my life way easier trying to get these threads as far down as I need them. And with the holes tapped I can confirm that my ball screw mounts do actually anchor into the cross slide. So that's great. And now with a little bit more jumping back and forth, I'm gonna work on the tensioning system for my main stepper. I shouldn't need to tension this very often, so I'm just gonna weld a nut onto this uh, piece of steel here, and then I'm gonna have a carriage bolt threaded through with a flathead cut in the threaded end of it. So that way I can just use a flathead screwdriver to turn the carriage bolt, and it'll push against the side and tension the belt. After welding, I ran a tap through the nut just to clean up the threads. I used a three-sided file, whatever the real name of that is, to put a quick notch in the bottom of the bolt, and I used my hacksaw to cut in the flathead. And now I can go and put the major bolt back on and double nut it again to hold it in place. And now I can just take my flathead screwdriver and turn the end, and it should tension it. In the last video I milled out a pocket in the cross slide so that way I could fit the ball screw nut underneath it. Or something like that. I guess I'll be milling that pocket again. Well while I have the cross slide right here I may as well go and mount the second stepper. I'm going to go and put this ball screw on and bolt it down. And now I need to start cutting out the bracket for the second stepper. This is some thicker angle, I think it's 3 eighths of an inch thick instead of quarter. But I'm going to go and cut it with the circular saw, which actually was not really liking this cut at first and I couldn't figure that out. It turns out this piece of angle had a ton of internal tension, so the second that I cut it most of the way through it actually shut on the blade of my saw. This piece and a whole bunch of others like it were being thrown away, so I got them for free. Unfortunately though, I don't know very much about them, so I'm hopeful that the other pieces don't have so, so much of this pretension in them, because it's really nice to be able to cut things with the circular saw so quickly and easily. If they all have the same kind of pretension to them, does anybody have any ideas of how I could cut these more easily? I'd imagine that it's going to bind just as much on an angle grinder blade, and clearly the circular saw, it binds pretty badly. I definitely want to use these pieces, but if I can't cut them very easily, that would be kind of a problem. Speaking of cutting easily, this drill bit was kind of a wreck. I'd totally smashed up the cutting flutes, but I went and resharpened it on the belt sander and it worked great. 
You can see my belts from my drill press still slip at really low torques, but I've actually just recently replaced them, so hopefully they're going to do much better now. Drilling holes for the mounting bracket, extra deep again. There's really not too much to say here to be honest. At this point it's kind of the same exact deal as before. Drilling the holes a little over deep, tapping them, and then checking the alignment. Once that's done, I'm going to move on and actually strip the paint from this. I just want to have a better metal to metal contact between this and the actual cross slide. After about 24 hours, I can just go take a dull crappy chisel and a razor blade and get at least the vast majority of the paint off. Unfortunately, this metal is a little bit rough on the outer surface, so I can't really get everything. But while I was doing that, I figured that I would go and put some more paint stripper on the sides of the lathe body itself. Just try to keep removing some more of that paint. And then once I've done that, may as well Put on one more coat, keep working away at this thing one step at a time. Something else I should have been doing a long time ago, I finally went and put the grease fittings on each of my rail cars and actually greased them from the inside. I'd put grease on the rails before and worked it a little bit into there, but now I have it truly greased from the inside out. I just used a standard black lithium grease though, so I hope that that's correct for this. Here I'm drilling out the hole for the axle for the stepper motor just a little bit wider to be 3 quarters of an inch. I just wanted a little bit more play and it didn't seem like it would have too much of an effect compared to a 5 8 hole. I also finally had my old digital calipers die so I got these nicer dial calipers and I'm still getting used to the dial but it's fun to experiment just measuring some pieces of scrap and it seems to be a really good quality tool. Now I'm starting to work on the actual fit up of the pieces that make up this ball screw assembly. Clearly the initial fit up isn't going to work but hopefully after I make some changes everything will work nicely. Unfortunately I had a little while where I didn't have a camera tripod so some of these are just photos. I ended up borrowing Calvin's mill once again to mill out the indent for the stepper motors. That way they'll fit flush where they're screwed down. I pretty much just did this freehand with a sharpie and then milled in the inside. All I really need to do is not mill out where I have screw holes in the stepper motor and not mill out too small for the indent to fit inside this hole. So at long last, all the indents are done. Now the next part of working on the fit up, I'm starting to slot the holes in my mounting plate. I should have just drilled a second hole and then filed between them, but unfortunately I didn't actually think of that. So I made up for it with extra work and spent extra time filing this, which was super fun. I also took a second to just cut these three bolts to size. It turns out if your ratchet has too much back drag to be able to screw in really loose fasteners, just holding the socket in your hand and spinning it works pretty well. Next step of the fit up process, I'm going and shortening the end of my ball screw. Right now it has some extra room on the end of the coupling. I wanted to shorten it to eliminate the gap between the end of the coupling and the start of the tensioning nut. After reassembly, it fits great. There's a tiny gap between the tensioning nut and the coupler and that's perfect. Now we'll just do a final assembly, trying to get all these pieces together all at once. I just want to see how it looks. So I've got my main stepper assembly attached. Now I'm installing all the pieces of the main lead screw. Then I set my cross slide on top of the rail cars and attach the secondary ball screw with the coupler already attached to my secondary stepper motor. And then I can attach my secondary rails. And there it is. This is a mock-up of almost all completed pieces of the lathe so far. Thanks so much for watching.